Whether you've got a new job with a change of income or new expenses, or you just want a fresh start, I'm gonna show you how to set up a new budget. I like to use Google Sheets because it's free and it's easy to use. And today I am going to set up a new budget for our family. I'm gonna walk you through how I do it. And I've got a free template for you as well. So hang on for that at the end. Hey there, Brittany Flammer here with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips. Now, my husband started a new job with completely different income. So we need a new budget for our family. Today, I'm gonna to set up our actual budget for our family. I'll walk you through it as I do it. Here is a new Google Sheet. I've started doing a little bit. We're going to start with your expected income. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're salary or hourly. You want to figure out how much you're going to get, how much you're actually going to take home after taxes and fees. It's easier if you're salary. So my husband is salary, but he's never been paid before, so he doesn't know exactly how much he will take home. So I got on to Smart Asset. They will take into factors whether you're hourly, how often you get paid, whether you're filing single, married, filing joint, how many allowances you have, these things, they will take that all into consideration and tell you what your take-home pay should be. Now it's not exact, it's just an estimate, but it gives you a good idea. So we went ahead and did this and my husband's job, he will be making around 4,600 a month. And that's what we will actually receive. That's after taxes, after insurance, all that, what we will take home. Now, I also have a job. I make sales on Etsy. I have a couple of affiliates, but I am not actually taking any payment for that. I'm As I get the money, it's just sitting in my business checking account. I am not actually transferring it over and using any of the money to live off of. So I'm just gonna put zero there for now. I'm hoping that will change soon. But there are so many other things if you, like side jobs, my husband does side jobs sometimes, or there could be tax refunds or child tax credits or stimulus, or if you have multiple jobs, you can go ahead and add more. Just right click, insert row, and add more, and it's automatically going to calculate this for me. Next, we're gonna move on to donations. Now, there are so many benefits of donating time and money. I'm not gonna get into that. We like to donate 10%. We donate a 10% tithing to our church, and we donate on our gross income, so before all of our taxes and stuff are removed. So that's gonna be around 680 a month. But we also do a fast offering and humanitarian aid. Then we move on to saving. Now, you might think it's weird to start by putting money into savings rather than paying your bills. But if you don't pay yourself first, then you never will. If you wait until you see what's left over at the end of the month, there's never gonna be enough left over to put money into savings. So we are going to put money into savings first, and then after we've gone through our budget, if we don't have enough money, we can tweak it. We're gonna start with emergency savings because everyone needs that. We already have ours fully funded, but you wanna make sure you have a few months of savings on hand. So if you need to add some to that, add that here. Also, retirement. You might be contributing to your retirement through your employer, so you might not need to add any. We do contribute through our employer, through my husband's employer, but it's not quite as much as we need. So we are putting more into a Roth IRA. A vacation is another thing to save up for. We have a huge vacation coming next year, so we are putting a lot towards that. A car fund. For us, this is just regular maintenance, oil changes, registration, maybe new tires eventually. Nothing major, but just regular maintenance of the car. House expenses, especially having a much larger house now, these add up. Um, we normally would just do $75 a month, but we have some major we're, major things we want to do in the next year or two. So we are actually putting a lot more towards that. Christmas is another thing that you can save up for a little bit each month, makes it so much easier. Now we move on to the boring bills. I call these boring because they're not very fun. These are more your fixed type bills that you don't have a whole lot of control over and you have to pay. So first one is housing. Our mortgage is $1,300 a month, so I'm gonna put that in there. Utilities comes next. We have gas, and um, these can be all over the place depending on the time of year. If your city offers it, see if you can get levelized payment. Uh, several places, several different cities where we've lived have offered this. 
um, where we're living currently, you have to have been living here for a year, but they will take the average of your past year and level it out. So your payments are consistent throughout the year, not way up high, then really low the next year. So our gas is set at $72 a month and it will take, it's a rolling average. So it might change a little bit month to month, but it will be pretty close to $72 a month. Electricity, I just spelled that wrong. I'll fix that later. Um, we just got solar panels, so it should be a set rate. I can't remember if it's 10 or $12. We'll say 12. Um, we have our city bill. And all I'm doing is I am looking at the past, whatever history I have, to get an idea of what the average is. So our average is around $100. Life insurance, if that's not taken out of your paycheck, Ours is not, so we pay $32 a month. Insurance, our car insurance is $75. Medical expenses or stuff, if you don't have that taken out of your paycheck, ours is taken out of our paycheck, so I am not gonna put it there, but if it's not taken out, you'll wanna set aside some money for medical phones. Our cell phones, we pay $30 a month. We were added to someone else's plan. Now, piano. This, you might think, would go under kids' extracurricular, but it's something we pay every single month. So I'm putting it in the fixed boring bills because I pay it every month. Internet. We're at an introductory rate that's going to go up soon, but that's what it is currently. And gas for our cars. What I just looked at the last couple of months of our gas, took the average, and that's what I put down. So it automatically, in the template, it will automatically total it for me. So I don't have to do any math, which is awesome. So now let's move on to fun bills. These are the bills that we have more control over, which is why they're fun. I think they're fun because we have control over them. Biggest one is groceries. Um, you could call it consumables, groceries and consumables, anything you can buy at the grocery store, Sam's, things that we consume. Um, if you've watched my video videos, I recommend $100 per person per month. Ours has always been less than that, but now that we are making more, I am so excited to raise this up. We have seven people in our family, so I'm moving this up to $700 a month, and I am so, so very excited about it. It also includes pocket money. My husband and I each get our own money to spend however we want, so I include that in our budget. It includes things like clothes. We don't spend a ton on that. Our kids' money system, they do jobs and we pay them and then they have to buy a lot of their own stuff. So I set aside money for that. I try to do, like actually go on a date once or twice a month. So we put 25 for there. And we will pay for babysitter. So you can add in whatever might fit for you in your situation. Bills, we've gone through and covered all of the areas of our of our budget. So now I wanna see how we're doing. Um, the thing I love about this is it's automatic. It automatically does the math and totals everything for me and it takes it all over here. So I can see the bottom line. So we wanna look at this bottom line here and I'm not doing so hot, I'm negative. I'm in the hole, I've spent 366 more than I think I will be making. So I've gotta go see where I can cut back. Can't, unless I can increase my income some way. Um, we're stuck there. I am not going to mess with our donations. I can't do much on our boring bills, but for savings, there's a lot I can do for savings. Um, I'm not going to change our retirement. Vacation. Um, we can reduce that and we'll take it down to $350. Um, our house expenses, I want to redo flooring next spring, but I can't save that much. So maybe I can take it down to 300 and we'll get our new floors in the fall instead of the spring. So now if I look at this, I'm just $66 over. Um, we went have been doing 500 a month for our groceries. So to jump up to 700 is a lot. I could probably cut that back to, let's say, 625 And let's see what our bottom line is. Okay, so $9. That's close enough to zero. I'm just going to leave it. You can get your free template for Google Sheets with all of the math already figured for you. You can tweak it and adjust it to what you want. It also has a debt category included. Just click on the link in the description box down below. You type in your email address and this template will come to your email address. Set up, but the most important thing is actually following through with the budget. So at the end of the month, I follow up to see how I actually did on my budget. And then I see what adjustments we need to make for the next month. So if you wanna see how we did and see how I follow up at the end of the month, check out my next video.